Now, I don't want to tell any of you how important uh, the issue is that we're going to talk about uh, today, but I thought it was equally important, perhaps more important, if we took so just a moment at the outset of our dialogue uh, to hear from someone who perhaps on a day-to-day -day basis uh, has an incredible amount of responsibility for trying to, in fact, ensure that uh, the young people that we are also desperately concerned about, and all children, uh, in fact, receive the highest quality education that California can provide. And I'm talking about the superintendent of your Department of Public Instruction, Mr. Jack O'Connell. Uh, superintendent O'Connell really needs no introduction because you are the hometown crowd. But I will, at the outset of our dialogue, uh, to hear from someone who perhaps, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, has an incredible amount of responsibility for trying to, in fact, ensure that uh, the young people that we are also desperately concerned about, and all children, uh, in fact, receive the highest quality education that California can provide. And I'm talking about the superintendent of your Department of Public Instruction, Mr. Jack O'Connell. Uh, superintendent O'Connell really needs no introduction because you are the hometown crowd. But I will, I will say just a couple of things um, about him. One, here at, we at the campaign for high school equity were, were very pleased that um, he consented and agreed to our invitation to be here uh, with us. And what little I know about the superintendent, what little I know about uh, the movement of education reform uh, as it has progressed in the state of California, uh, I happen to think that the state of California is fairly ahead of a number of other states, and I think it's largely a testament to the work that all of you have been doing over the years and some of the work that your Department of Education and Public Instruction has been doing, uh, primarily under the leadership of Jack O'Connell. And so we're just very, very pleased to have him here. Superintendent O'Connell has to um, catch a plane, but I asked him if he would just say a few words to kind of help us frame uh, the discussion this afternoon. address uh, 
uh, the, those types of issues that are difficult conversations that need to be uh, undertaken. The best study I had seen on dropout rate occurred in Los Angeles Times, small little fledgling newspaper, like I'm not sure you've heard of it, a little bit uh, north of here. And they did and dedicated a tremendous amount of time and resources about a year, about three years ago, to actually, that it was some of the best reporters, best researchers, I don't know if they have the financial capability to do this today, given the uh, economic situation of media, some. But they really went out and tracked down students that no longer were coming to school. And you might remember the series. I think it was a four or five part series. And I actually got somewhat emotional reading the stories. And the bottom line was when the reporters or the researchers tracked some of these students down while they were no longer coming to school to get accurate numbers, bottom line was the kid would say, I missed a period of school. Nobody seemed to care. And then I decided to take a day off. And nobody seemed to care. And then I took a couple days and maybe a week. And nobody really cared. And then I got so far behind on my studies, it became embarrassing. And I couldn't get caught up. And the next thing I knew, I just never wanted to go to school. You know, we often hear the saying, the saying, well, a kid fell through the cracks. Well, I'll tell you, you will never hear me use that expression. Because to me, it implies that somehow that's acceptable. Somehow it's an excuse. Somehow it's inevitable. Well, that was then, and this is now. And we must be a no-excuse zone. There are no cracks. We need to make sure that we have that solid, that rock-solid foundation. This year, for the very first time, we collected dropout data and other data. For the very first time, we have assigned all 6.3 million students a student identifier. They have numbers. And I went back and talked to several of my predecessors and good friends of Senator Vasconcelos, went back and talked to Bill Honig about the issue, uh, to, to do my homework, to work on this. There were actually discussions in California, I have found, that occurred back into the late 1970s and early 1980s about tracking students and trying to find out what the dropout rate is, what the graduation rate is. And we never were able to put together an effort, a plan, a program to assign these numbers to our students in California. I can tell you today, and I'm quite proud, we now have a student identifier number for every student in the state of California. So the data that we have, it's no more guesses, it's no more assumptions, uh, it's no more complicated formulas. We now have data that really is based on fact, on real numbers. So for the first time, I can stand here and tell you what the official dropout rate is for 2006, 2007. But let me preface this by saying to you what I've been saying for many years, it's too high, it's unacceptable, and it must be addressed. And the dropout rate for the state of California for 06, 07 was 21 and a half percent. 21 and a half percent. The graduation rate for the state of California, same year, was 67.7 percent. Now, I know we have some math majors in here, so you're gonna quickly do the math. Right, Michael? I see the wheels turning. And 67.7 and 21.5 does not add to 100%. Am I correct? See, I'm a public school graduate, so I'll get this. I'll explain to you that difference in a minute. But you might be familiar with what California listed as a dropout rate last year on the federal form that we are required to send. And using the methodology that the federal government asked us last year, we actually listed the dropout rate as 13% for the state of California. No doubt in my mind, that was low and underreported. But that was what we re required their methodology to use last year. Totally different assumptions. So it would be uh, not accurate to compare last year's to the year before. Do not compare the 13 to 21.5. Totally different methodologies.